you know, how we should adjust our rates, not adjust our rates, if we're going to borrow. Um, this this will be an interactive type uh, water sewer rate study plan. Once, once it hits my computer, we can program this from year to year as we go forward and we, and we change projects in the capital plan or things drop off or we add to the capital plan. So um, I was very impressed with, with this type of water rate study rather than just pull numbers off a website and try and put them all together and, and guess on our end. Um, so that's where we're at with the with the water rate study. And to be the devil's advocate, Martin. why do we need somebody to give us a, a plan on that? I mean, if we were to pull our numbers off, we saw what our expenses are, we looked at a five-year plan, what our expenses were, what our expenses have gone up, and then we projected that over the next five years. It's beyond our purview to be able to do that uh, in-house? It's, it's very, very time-consuming and in, in to project out. Um, What's the cost to have this done by outside? For both water and sewer, uh, in, including presentation to the board, is eighteen thousand dollars for for both water and sewer. Wasn't this already voted by town meeting? It was yes. voted by yes. town meeting. You already have fifty thousand dollars for dedicated to this yeah. project. So we just saved twenty thirty two thousand, but it only cost you eighteen. Yes. Okay, I'll make a motion to. Uh, Go ahead with the study since it's already been allocated by town meeting. Second. And those will be coming out of which reserve? Water, water, water and sewer. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just so people know that it's not coming anywhere else, but it's already been designated out of the water and sewer reserves. Yes, I, I believe we already have special articles for the money. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. not everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Did, do we actually need to vote on this? Or do we? No. No? Okay. So this was for information, right? Just to make sure yes. that everybody was aware that this was going on and because it was just getting kicked off. Right. And then when we talked about the water sewer rates last spring, we, we had discussed how right. each budget cycle we wanted to, to take a look at water sewer rates, at least talk about them from year to year. But I think with this study going on, it's going to be about eight weeks before this is all, all set to go. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it'll be a very good... Um, a very good model for us to run with, um, you know, whether we like it, don't like it, or whatever. But there's choices on how we want to approach the rates going forward to meet meet our capital improvements. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Have we hired the vendor? Yes, uh, the, the the vendor is time bond. We pretty much know our systems probably just better than anybody. Who's the other water company that we were using before? Um, three letters. CEI. CEI. Did, did, our, did our water and our capital improvement plan. Mm -hmm. um, but I felt this model, the way they presented it, Ty and Bond, that I thought it was important to bring water and sewer together as one. Um, so they're putting the water information together and then it, you know the sewer follows and plugs everything into the models and the graphs. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was very important rather than keep separate uh, consultants, one consultant to do the whole thing, I thought was, was important. Okay. So, anything else for our tri board meeting before we adjourn that and head into our regular? Does the school have anything for us? Yeah, it's new business, but school? Um, <clears throat> no, I don't think anything else for us right now. Maybe I completely missed it. Was there a motion on the table? I did, but we did, it wasn't needed. That's oh, why I just yes, asked David if we needed one, and we, we did because gotcha, I was already gotcha. approached gotcha. attending. Uh, so something I wanted to formally bring before the select board and actually school committee since mm -hmm. you guys are here. So working with the HCG, not the HCOG, the HCG, um, I think I've briefed you guys before, but they're looking at strategic planning, uh, giving it a hard look, trying to figure out what they're going to do. And they're meeting with state legislators to kind of envision the future of what the HCG can be for the county. And so I had my first meeting with the Regional Services Committee, which I'm serving on, which is being, as everyone felt, underutilized. So they're kind of just treading water right now and feeling that regional services really should be the bread and butter of the HCG, but it hasn't been. I think that's been obvious. So we're all trying to be a little pie in the sky and envision what the HCG could be or programs that we could be offering. But one of the troubles we've gotten into before is the HCG has gotten into before is telling communities what they need. 
saying this is what we'll provide, please sign up for it, rather than going to the communities first to try and figure things out. Um, so as individual members were trying to come up with programs, something struck me after conversations last year about the school budget and how they approach um, funding for special needs assistance, education, educators, and administrators. So I'm looking for you to tell me if this is even legal or if it's completely crazy. <laughs> but I've envisioned a um, basically a special education stabilization fund. I think there might have been talk about that internally before, right? About setting money aside ahead of time because these costs can come up unexpectedly or um, and be hard to budget for at the last second. And what I'm envisioning where the HCG would get involved is acting as kind of a group stabilization fund, which you're getting close to talking about an insurance program for all the small hill towns, right? So obviously a special needs student comes in that can ballpark in the numbers anywhere from $50,000 to $200,000 it costs, which for an especially small town like Hadley is huge to absorb. But if you're paying into a stabilization fund and essentially paying that through to the HCG who puts it in a big pot, again, acting like insurance, any one of the smaller towns that, that has one of those special needs students can get reimbursed the cost for that over time. And so obviously this would take a lot of kind of business modeling and, and policy, I'd assume, know-how. But what I wanted to get a feel for is if that's something you'd be interested in bringing to the school committee from the HCD to see if there's interest, right? We don't want to go down a road before seeing if towns are even interested first, right? Right. But we just kind of want to put it on the table. So I think it would be um, timely for mm -hmm. me to take it back to the group next week since we are going to be starting a budget discussion to get a feel for the um, the rest of the school committee's thoughts on it. Um, this is my first year partaking in budget, so it'll be a new process for me, but certainly the others who are more seasons might have an idea yeah. um, as far as whether or not it would be something they would be interested in. Still learning how funding a special sure. education is at this point would I'd want to hear what they have to say. Yeah, yeah. But I certainly would bring it to their Yeah, and I'll draft up something more formal in writing, too, and send it out as a memo or something. Absolutely. Yeah. So in some years you would benefit, and some years mm. you would not benefit. If you depend, it just gave you a budgetary line item that you could. Like insurance. Yeah. You I'll pay every year. And but there's no place to draw it out of. I mean, there's only other towns losing for you to gain and you to lose when they gain. It's just kind of gives you a stable rate that you invest all the time and whether or not your expenses go up or down you're still here is that that the idea behind exactly that? okay so again like insurance you're all putting into one big pot that you all can pull from to make it economically work obviously there's a lot of work that would need to be done but it just seems by coming together as communities it'd be a little easier to do than try and build your own stabilization fund for when that eventually comes up that organization was here when, well, I think about a year and a half ago and didn't we give them a list of about seven things that we were actually looking for mm -hmm. help with yeah. so and do could we go back into that and get uh, Gabriel a, a copy of that so that again instead of yeah the four set prize they didn't pass that <laughs> yeah we, we had a, a bunch of things that we were looking for that we thought would be helpful to communities yeah. and that every community had the same need and it was a burdensome thing and we felt that those those were things we could use some help with so all right can give you the date of the meeting and I know you like to watch YouTube so you can actually watch that segment mm -hmm. and, and hear the back and forth on it. Perfect. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. So just to follow up on that, are you gonna ask us about other things that we may be needing? Um, you know, I know that I know that we're buying regional services asphalt tires, things like that, mm -hmm. but... Uh, yes, so what the HED is planning coming up is a meeting with the legislators <coughs> to get everyone on the same page in terms of the severity of the condition, HED, with a follow-up meeting to then talk about, you know, the vision where it can go. So before then, I'd definitely like to get feedback on what we're looking for specifically is what the HCG can become that would be unique to a county regional form of government that can't be accomplished elsewhere. Trying, you know, the value proposition is what we're marketing to. Um, so yeah, I mean, starting with that list, I was going to go through the seven things that had they already provided and then come back and ask again, building from this, kind of where we can go with it, but yeah. find you after. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. All right, thanks, Gabriel. Okay, we all set with tri -board. Okay, so if that's the case, then we'll move along to our regular select board business.
you want to take the um, model out of the... Uh, uh, he's staying for executive session. So what are we doing on that? We could do a consent agenda. Uh, we're doing a consent agenda, yep. And then uh, now we have another guest here, but I believe uh, Chief Mason's joining him? Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay, so for the consent agenda, um, we have approval requested for the minutes for November 1st and November 8th. We have payable and payroll warrants 18, 23, 26, 26, 27, 26, 27, 23, 27. We have a one-day liquor license request from the top of the campus, Kevin Park Comedy Show at the Mullen Center for a concession in VIP seat arenas. That would be held on March 9th. We also have a one-day liquor license, same venue, Trigger Burke Lounge for the, um, the Champion Center for January 30th, which is coming right up. And then we have a one-day liquor license for the Commencement Ball uh, for May 4th, 2018. We have a Conservation Commission appointment, uh, Mr. Adam Goodman, as an associate member, and then he's also interested in being on the Agricultural Commission. We have a sewer impact fee agreement that was reached with the Hampshire Mall, and finally a veterans tax work-off program for five positions at $500 each. So, so moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion necessary? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, that is the consent agenda. Um, and I do believe we have a, we have a couple of guests today. So if we can, can we jump to the UMass party registration program? Where's it, Eric? Just stepped out to wipe his nose. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. You ready? <laughs> yeah. All right. So we have with us Chief Mason. Yeah. We have Mr. Eric Field from the University of Massachusetts and a new Hadley resident. Welcome. Thank you. Right. Very much. Yeah. Are you technically a resident yet? Not yet. No. Um, a few Soon. months. Soon. Soon. Okay. All right. So uh, we're here tonight just to um, just to let you know of uh, a new project that we're going to try to undertake over at uh, Hadley PD. Um, we're hoping that uh, it has a great benefit to you know the residents in town. Eric um, has been he, he's to, for those of you who don't know he works for UMass um, in their uh, community relations department. Uh, he is a neighborhood liaison, and um, he's been working with us since he started on really trying to stem any issues that our community may have with our, the students at UMass who live in Hadley. Parties, noise, you know, any other problems that we, uh, that we have or could potentially have. He tries to stem them before they start. They started a, a pilot program what, over a year ago now? This year and a half ago. A year and a half uh, in Amherst called Party Smart, which is essentially a party registration program. And um, I'll let him get into the details of some of the successes that they've seen uh, from this program. But essentially, um, what we're looking to do is adopt this program that they've been using. And hopefully, it will work for um, you know, the, the issues that we have with uh, college parties in our town. Um, the students will register their party uh, with UMass uh, employees. Um, they will notify and notify our department of where the party is. Uh, uh, they register parties on certain days, and it allows us to free up personnel so we don't have to send personnel to every single party call and put some of the onus back on the students and give them an opportunity to shut the party down before the police have to respond and deal with it uh, in possibly a punitive manner. So Eric will probably tell you a little bit more about uh, some of the successes that they've seen, but. Uh, everything that I have heard about the program, I've spoken to um, some of the high-ranking officials over at Amherst PD since they uh, began using the program, and they love it. The How about the low-ranking? The low-ranking like the, it too? Believe it or not, the, yeah, they do as well because they, they don't have to respond as much to these same places over and over and over again. So, uh, so I could let Eric just describe to you a little bit about that, but um, we're going to give it a shot over here and have it. We just wanted to, to run it by you. Um, yeah, thanks again for having me tonight, Eric Beal, in the uh, Department of External Relations and University of Ed City, Mass. Um, and we have had a, a, what we feel is a very successful run of the program. Uh, it was uh, created, implemented, designed, 
by the Campus and Community Coalition. It's a town gown committee. Uh, Hadley is a member of that committee um, that looks at quality of life issues and how they can be solved through a town gown lens. Um, we looked at party registration, started probably two and a half years ago, uh, looking at the experience of other communities, um, primarily in Colorado, in Boulder, Fort Collins. I tried to learn from their example how they put together, steal some of the language from the rules and regs, um, and we implemented the program as a pilot a year and a half ago. So in the first academic year, 16, 17, we had over 300 parties registered. Uh, about 10%, uh, 34 or so, required a courtesy call. And that's how the program is set up, where the students will register a uh, party by Thursday at 4 p.m. Uh, in our off-campus student services center, which is uh, Dr. Salinowski, many of you probably know, uh, is also head of the resident. Um, and uh, so that was to be transmitted over to, to dispatch. Uh, if a noise complaint is called in to a registered party, um, the, the, um, the, the desk officer will, will uh, make a phone call to the registered member and say, you have a noise complaint about your party, you have 20 minutes to, to, to shut it down. Uh, and we found by and large that, that that's been the case in Amherst. Uh, I think of that first year there were um, two or three parties where there actually had to be a, 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 a public safety intervention because the party had grown to the point where the residents simply couldn't clear it by themselves. Uh, and that's uh, another important sort of part of this uh, program is that, that um, tenants know that they have that option. Uh, this year um, already we have over 400 parties just in the fall term. So we, if we're, on, we're on par to hit um, 800 to 1,000 uh, registered parties uh, for this academic year. Um, so the, the goals of the program, as the chief said, are, are number one, uh, when the students come in to register, we give them a pep talk on how to be good neighbors, how to be responsible hosts, how to stay out of trouble with, with the PD. Um, and um, so that's one goal, is to have that conversation on the educational uh, intervention. Another one is to reduce the drain on public public safety resources. I think because you have fewer numbers of these types of issues in Hadley, uh, you may not see that as much, uh, but one big party can tie up a lot of staff for a long time. Um, so we found that to be effective in this. I don't think we put a number on it yet uh, in terms of uh, you know, savings and staff time, but it's certainly something that we've seen. Now we also like it because as the chief said, allow students to be responsible. Right, and, and to take charge of, uh, of the party. The noise complaint comes in, they get the call, uh, and they have a chance to shut it down before officers are dispatched. Uh, if a second noise complaint comes in after the 20 minutes, uh, in Amherst, they're gonna send, they're gonna send officers out uh, because at that point, they've already had the phone call. And they got their courtesy call. Um, Eric, what, do you, yes. what, what constitutes a party in, in the eyes of uh, the college? I mean, is it 10 people, is it 100 people? What? What's a party? We don't define it uh, on purpose because the, really the goal here is noise reduction. Uh, and so the rules are clear and the students explain to students who register. And it's only right now available to UMass students, right, 18 and over. Um, this doesn't apply to fights, uh, underage drinking, anything else, outdoor fires, right? Um, it's just for noise. Um, so we don't define what a party is. Okay. It could just be uh, you know, a group of guys getting together to watch the game. Uh, and we've done some survey data. We found that most of the parties fall between 25 and 75 in number. Um, some are fewer than that, some are more. How is this communicated to the, to the students? Uh, it's communicated through email, through uh, student affairs. Um, we also have marketed to students uh, sort of in person, the campus center. Um, but it's primarily through email and word of mouth, honestly, because once it gets started, and students talk about it among themselves and say, this is a good program. It gives you a chance to shut down the party before you have a police presence at your property. Do they do that like on orientation day or registration day when the kids come into school? Uh, it's not yet. It, it's not for orientation uh, for first year students. Uh, those would be folks who would be living on campus. Mm -hmm. um, so right now we're targeting our communication to off-campus students. Uh, but we have those email addresses. And again, I think it's really been by word of mouth. Uh, and we've already surpassed, you know, in fall term, the number of parties we had for all last year. Okay. Any other questions? That's my support. Yeah, sounds like a plan. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't need a vote. We just simply wanted to uh, run it past you just to, you know, and let the public hear about it so that uh, they know that we're, you know, we're still making efforts to Get, get about how many party houses do you think we have now? 
I would probably have to check with the patrolman on that. It's been a while since I've been out on a midnight shift, but uh, okay. I, I want to say I had a short conversation with, with uh, one of the sergeants recently, and he, he said uh, upwards of you know, 12 to 15 at least. Um, but it, the problem is that they change every year. You know? Someone will just stop renting to the college kids and rent to a family, and then you know, some another house will, will be rented to, uh, to the younger kids. So. It's hard to tell, it's hard, you know, really. Just the ones that we have problems with is the ones that we know for sure. As soon as the weather turns, everybody's got closed windows. It's Yeah, I mean, winter is not as, not nearly as much of a problem. I'll, I'll be driving into work on you know, Saturday morning to, to do paperwork, and I could I can tell the houses that had parties the night before because there's 20 cars parked right, outside, exactly. but, you know, there was no call to that house, so obviously <laughs> they were all locked up inside. In the summer, that's when, you know, people are on roofs and things Maybe like that. Maybe we can model a, um, a West Street common party registration after this. So we'll do it. Have we call it in ahead of time? <laughs> Is there any way for... <laughs> 20 minutes to shut it down. Is there any way for Chief for you to get names from, from neighbors of these people that feel that these parties should be registered? I mean, have you, do you advocate for that as well and then contact Eric and Eric we, and... Yeah, we, we, don't, we don't ever... Um, we certainly don't deter people from doing anything like that. If there's a house in their neighborhood that there's certainly a problem house, um, Eric has actually already gone out with our, our school resource mm -hmm. officer and they have uh, awesome door hangers with all the rules that they've actually uh, adapted for Hadley. Um, they took the bylaws, for example, for Amherst, all the alcohol related bylaws, um, and they put them on door hangers. And they, through, with their own funds, made the same ones for Hadley with our bylaws on. Um, he's been out multiple times with our SRO and identified certain party houses and hung on the door so they know that we know that you know people live here, we know that you go to UMass, these are the rules, things like that. So we don't we certainly don't deter people from calling, but um, you know, the education part of it to get to them before there's a problem is kind of a, a big deal for us. So we, we encourage that. We'll, we'll we will we will certainly send people out to talk to them beforehand. And, so that, like to do it. and that goes to your question about another way that, that we market this is directly to houses that mm -hmm. had a police response. That's great. Uh, so we have that information <coughs> that described. And then on the back side, we'll add now party registration rules. And that's the way we've done it in, in Amherst. Uh, and we hand those out at every house that we go to to have uh, kind of a knock and talk. Mm -hmm. And every, um, every Monday or every other Monday, um, there's a meeting over at UMass that we've become you know, very much involved in where we can bring any issues that we've had over the weekend to them, um, and their disciplinary process has completely revamped as far as how they handle these types of things. When I was on the CCC, we less. couldn't get any information back. Mm -hmm. We could have the discussion. We could say this is a problem, awesome. We need to some help in addressing that, but there was absolutely no communications back as to what happened after that. So I don't know how that's changed now, but hopefully it has. Yeah, and, yeah. This, and just to jump in quickly, you know, the, the party registration, it's part of a whole suite of programs and policies that we've implemented right in the last 10 to 15 years, the box, yeah. right, including you know, applying our code of conduct off campus, uh, the on-call meeting that the chief described where we have town partners uh, to sort of post more on the weekend, um, make referrals for discipline, uh, and our dean of students office uh, you know, takes those issues very seriously. Um, so we, we are making those changes to be better partners and sort of looking, you know, we look at best practices nationally uh, through this International Town Count Association. Um, so we can sort of share ideas of what works, what doesn't work. Um, and so we're, I think we're in a much better place than, I'm not sure when you were. Uh, it, it, it was probably eight, ten years ago, and I, I, we worked very close with Sally. She did a fabulous job. Yeah, Sally's wonderful. She did, and, yeah. and Martha Nelson was there yep. at that point in time. We worked. I was working with her. That was been a, previous quite a while ago. And they were absolutely excellent in trying to get, you know, get these things brought forward. But it just it came to a certain point, and then the brakes slammed on. Yeah. So, but I think there was some uh, privacy information that we well, that had to be abided by. But. Right, but we still don't, I mean, if you're asking about the results of a, a code of conduct disciplinary hearing, we don't have access to those, and those are confidential, right, what the, with, with the discipline uh, imposed is. Uh, but that's as it should be, because there are student privacy issues at play. But in terms of what we, you know, look at this now, this entire process, it starts at new student, new, new student orientation and goes all the way through uh, to try to educate students. We also have relationships with, you know, town public safety, the DA's office, um, and so we, 
really look at um, these issues on a case-by-case -case basis. I, I think and things have gotten better anyways than they were. So many years ago, we had some significant high parties. I think it's a nice way for uh, these houses to know that there's a relationship going on with our police department. And that, that, they're, talk. that you exactly. talk. Exactly. Um, they're also there for I mean, if you can avert uh, one um, alcohol poisoning mm -hmm. uh, and not have anybody be on that edge, then I think mm -hmm. it's a great thing. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the kids when they go to college, that this is this is part of life. I mean, this isn't anything that isn't going to happen. They just have to be kind of responsible at times. Yeah, you had common rage. sense. We were having ragers, you know, and all of a sudden you just texted somebody and all of a sudden went to everybody. Yeah. And, and John Devine's barn. Uh, way out off the, the road, sure. there was about a thousand yeah, students in there, there when the mud was there. Where's that? Right on the Amherst line. And, and my uncle got a call, and he's like, "There's there's 800 cars in your in your field. There was all mud. They couldn't get out. And, and they, went, they were looking for tractors to pull the cars out. He's like, I'm not pulling no car. Out. Sounds like a business opportunity. Yeah. Well, it did seem like that was a kind of a fad that came and went from you know pushing buttons and figuring it out so I'm glad it's less less of a problem now yeah. 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 well thanks for take, taking the time we appreciate, appreciate your help you're welcome Good I will just you. say in closing and I know you know this uh, the Chief Mason's been a pleasure to work with uh, and uh, Officer Romano is the SRO officer uh, and, and uh, Sergeant Light. so those have been my most of my primary contacts um, they have been very excellent mm -hmm. thank you for having me Thank you. Thank you. In retrospect, we'd like to thank you for Sally Lenowski as well. She would she would love to be here. She's traveling uh, to a conference. Yeah. Otherwise, she would be here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Take care. I'm staying. Uh, let's see. Fire Department Junior Firefighter Program. I thought we were passing over this, yeah. but you're here. We are passing over. Okay. Chief, can you say hi? Yes. Great right to meet you. Department. Sounds good. Department. All right. Uh, Bay Road Bridge Reconstruction. Are you here for the contract? Yes. Executive session? Okay. Yeah. Gay yes. um, Road Bridge Reconstruction? Uh, yes. Uh, I received a, a cross-sectional uh, preliminary design for what's going to be the new <coughs> Bay Road Bridge. Um, I think it's pushed out to 2021, I believe. Um, Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> Uh, what they what they've done they they they've sent a, a uh, cross sectional uh, diagram of what was discussed back in uh, February when when I met with um, Mass DOT engineers from Boston, um, and then uh, I think it was around that time or a month later or somewhere in that neighborhood, um, I approached the board. We had a meeting uh, discussing um, two sidewalks or one sidewalk. Um, the engineers in Boston were looking for a letter. We decided on one sidewalk. We discussed the water main. Um, um, being part of the project. So um, basically I reviewed the, the, the cross-sectional um, sketch that they sent us. It is, it is exactly what we talked about. It's exactly what we agreed to in the letter back, I think it was last March or, or somewhere in there. Um, they haven't got into any of the, the real details yet. We, I, I remember we talked about the eight inch water may be converted to a 12 and we paid a difference and stuff like that, but they're not that far along. What, what they're looking for is a, a, a letter from, from the town uh, appro approving the, uh, the bridge dimensions that are proposed on, on, on the actual sketch um, so they can proceed to move along on their, their build up of, of the project. So who's looked at this? You, you've looked at it. I've looked at it, yes. I see a cross section. Is there a wood section here? I mean, I can well, see yeah, yeah, it's the the top, Jerry, it, it, the very top. Yeah. Uh, travel lanes are 12 feet, two shoulders, a shoulder on each side, five foot three inches, which would be wide enough for bike lanes if we uh, chose to have bike lanes at some point. And then the one side, one sidewalk, uh, five foot six inches wide, um, obviously with guardrails on both sides, and then the water main hanging off one side there. So 24 foot road with uh, approximately 10 foot six inch shoulders. You're going to have. What is it now? Uh, I, I think it's 20? it's it's wide. It, the, the proposal's wider. Uh, I do not believe we have five foot three uh, enough room over there for five foot bike lanes or mm -hmm. shoulders on that bridge at this point in time. Yeah, if you if you see the diagram, you yeah. can see a shadow. Where yeah, the on the very bottom. Is. No, oh. the very top. Yeah. So you're looking at. 
the, the total bridge is probably going to be about eight feet wider. In, in a quick guess here, peeking at it. Um, the the other thing is the elevation. Uh, what was talked about in February is that the, the, the new bridge is going to be elevated, oh, so there isn't yeah. so there isn't quite a dip into the bridge coming from the south. It's going to be brought up. I'm, I'm thinking 18 inches. We talked about. Um, so there'll be less of a, a, a steep hill there and less of a curse hitting the bridge and coming across um, adjustments such as that. Um, so the eight, eight feet wider is to accommodate bike, bike lanes, is that correct? Yeah, and you'll have full 12, uh, full 12 foot shoulders. travel lanes too. Um, your shoulders and then you have your, your one sidewalk that we had discussed back in March. And that's going to be better for public safety vehicles, right? I mean, your fire trucks and stuff? Yeah, yeah, there'll be more road Yeah. Your sidewalk will still be on your north side? Uh, I believe so, yes, that's what we talked about. So people can fish off of it? Yes. Was that a previous conversation? Yes. If there, if there was ever a chance of adding sidewalks to, to, to Bay Road, it would be the north side. So the north side of that bridge makes the most sense. There's that. It'd be way too many um, restrictions to put sidewalks on the, on the south side, Jared, I believe, if we ever get sidewalks there. But. Thank you. Yeah. Do we need to vote or anything? Or? Uh, it, it's a matter of, um, I, I wanted to bring it to letter. your attention, and, they, and, and, and I, we can draft the letter up that, that can be sent to the, the state engineer. They're just looking for a draft letter with the, with yeah. the town's blessing, Hearing, the board's blessing. No objections, we'll go ahead and do that. Okay. Yeah. Sounds great. And as this, as this project works up, there'll be other information i got to bring to you that we'll need to talk about anyways, I'm sure. <laughs> so. mm -hmm. Okay. All right, then um, we do have executive session scheduled tonight. I'm just looking, David, anything that we need to know uh, before we start? Yeah, there are two, two items that came up uh, late. And, uh, the first one is the water sewer commitment from the, uh, the folks downstairs that needs to be signed and returned. And the other is a uh, involves North Hadley Village Hall back in the day when the theater group uh, occupied the upper story. They installed a series of, uh, of braces so that they could hang their theater lights on. Uh, and now that we're planning on selling the building, they're wondering if they could have their property back. Do you know what the, so it's just um, like lighting? Not even lighting, it's just the like holes, like the braces place. to hold the lighting up. It's not, I mean, it's through the drop ceiling, so they just have to be careful with that. So they don't have to, you know, take out beams to... You're not concerned that it's going to be ceiling to be right when the cream Well, there's going to be holes in the drop ceiling, so you could ask them to replace the tiles with pavement. So I'm assuming it's bolted to the original structure. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> so is there a motion on the sewer water commitment? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And is there uh, permission granted to uh, give the property back to the theater group? As long as I think I'd like to see Gary Berg go with them, that they not be in the building alone and making sure what yeah, they're happening. safe too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Someone, someone from the town should be with them. I would assume it's Gary since he does buildings. Somebody you want to contact me direct that I yeah. can set it up. Uh, yeah. You can give me the contact information or they. Yeah, he'll, he's going to call me tomorrow afternoon and okay. I'll. Just forward him to me, my, my I, I would like to have Gary make a recommendation or make a determination or yourself as to whether or not those ceiling tiles should be replaced if it's going to look like. I, I have no concept of how many of these ceiling tiles are affected or if it's going to be, you know, a problem or not. Probably with the reconstruction of the building. We're going to knock the whole building down, but I guess that's not <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I, I'd like to make the motion, but I'd like Gary to or yourself okay. to make the determination so whether those should be. Condition motion. Yeah, I, I mean, I think we should take some pictures before, you know, just make sure that's fine. So is there a second on Jerry's conditioned motion? Certainly. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You understand the conditions there? Yep. All right, um, so that takes care of those uh, unforeseen items. Mm -hmm. And then are there any announcements before we move to executive session? Send the select board's condolences to um, Aaron Rex and her sister Megan Ahernford. 
um, they lost their mother, Mary Jane Ahern. Um, she uh, was a nurse at the hospital and worked with her for many years. And uh, she's a really good person. You know, she's going to be missed by everybody. And she had a lot of other relatives in town, too. Mm -hmm. Barstow's. And Barstow's. Yeah. With her sister and Steve and a few. Uh, anything else? Sir? Yes, I've been asked to make the listing of the open uh, boards and committees that we have at this point in time. <coughs> Excuse me. The Agriculture Commission is looking for one member and one alternate. Cemetery Commission Committee is looking for three members. Cultural Council is looking for five members. Disability Commission is looking for three members. Finance Committee is looking for one member. Hadley Media Peg Authority is looking for two members. Municipal Buildings Committee is looking for one member. Uh, North Hadley uh, Substation is looking for three members. And the Shade Tree Committee is looking for one member. Anybody that has a little time available that would like to uh, do their civic duty and help out with these committees, please uh, contact the Select Board's office. Speak to David, and uh, we'll get you, we'll find a home for you. Thanks very much. Okay, so with that, um, if there's nothing else, then we will uh, adjourn our regular meeting to move into executive session. And we have two items for executive session this evening. Joyce, do you want to do the honors? And we'll select board, I'll make a motion to go into executive um, session for the provision of MGL Chapter 30A, Section 21A to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation, if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on bargaining or litigation position of the public body, and the chair so declares DPW, dispatch, and police unions. Yeah. And? And not to reconvene an open session. Second. Third. And uh, we have a second Nine. item as well. 9.2. And, and also to enter into Oh, yes, here we go. Contract negotiations with the chief of police. We're out of Okay, so as, right, as yeah. chair of the select board, I declare that having uh, this discussion in open session uh, could have a detrimental impact on the bargaining or litigating position of our public body. Roll call vote, Devine? Yes. Keegan? Yes. Trumlo? Yes. All right, thank you. Good night, everybody. Thank you.